Welcome to Work Study Supervisor Training. You may or may not have supervised student workers in the past. This training has been put together to make sure that we are all on the same page when it comes to the work study process and guidelines. You have been given a copy of the work study packet of forms used to get a student set up in payroll. All of the forms in this packet are available on our website. We will go over the process of requesting and hiring work study. We will also cover the rules and guidelines, how to complete timesheets, how to handle disciplinary issues, best practices, and how to handle questions and inquiries. If you have questions that come up while viewing this training, please write them down and feel free to contact NIDA at the Brooklyn Park campus or Kendra at the Eden Prairie campus. The first step is to request work study hours for your department for the upcoming academic year. You will do this by completing the work study request form under faculty and staff on HTC's website. You will need to log in using your CMS account login. If you are unsure as to your username and password, please contact NIDA or Ardashir for assistance. On this form, you will not only request hours for your department, but you will also be creating the job description and inputting job qualifications. Be as specific as possible. This position will be posted to HTC's website for students to view and apply. There is no application to apply. Students will contact you directly to apply an interview. You may determine requirements for applications such as a resume and cover letter. Once a student has contacted you and expressed interest in the position, there are a few more things that need to be ironed out before you can officially hire them. There is an enrollment requirement of six credits or more for students to be able to work. They must also have been awarded work study. This is something they can check in their eServices account. If a student does not have work study, please have the student make an appointment to see NIDA or Kendra to determine if it is possible to add work study to their award letter. If we are unable to do so, you will not be able to hire the student for work unless you are able and willing to pay them out of department funds. If the student meets the enrollment requirement and has work study or is being paid out of department funds, they need to make an appointment to see NIDA or Kendra to complete paperwork. Please have the student bring identity documentation so that we can complete the I-9 form for them. If you view the I-9 form in the packet, the third page lists acceptable documentation. Most students bring in their driver's license with their social security card or birth certificate. Both documents must be presented. Students also commonly bring a U.S. passport or a permanent resident card. Once the paperwork has been completed, it must be signed off by the supervisor before it is returned to financial aid. On the work study agreement, which is the first page of your packet, there is a section to be completed by the supervisor. It requires your printed name, signature, department, cost center code, Minsky printer ID number for Eden Prairie supervisors, and supervisor tech ID. The tech ID number is now required as we move towards using e-timesheets for work study. Per D2L training module 7 on data security issues, Use of the employee ID as an identifier is an appropriate practice because the ID numbers by themselves are public information. For the time being, until we move to eTimesheets, we are requesting that an alternate supervisor sign off on the agreement in case you are unavailable to sign off on timesheets at the end of the pay period. Make sure that the first supervisor's signature is the supervisor who will be approving eTimesheets. Once you and your alternate supervisor have signed off on the bottom portion of the work study agreement, the student should meet with NIDA or Kendra for a follow-up appointment, where paperwork will be finalized and copies will be given to the student. We will forward the information to payroll. Processing takes about one week. Students cannot work until you have a timesheet in hand for them. The day you get the timesheet, the student can start working. Setting their schedule and any training should be handled by the supervisor. All student employees are paid the same hourly rate of $8. We do not offer insurance coverage, but in the work study packet, we offer information on Minsure and how to get insurance coverage.
students cannot work more than 20 hours per week with the exception of breaks like spring break, winter break, and in some cases, summer break. During these periods, students can work up to 40 hours per week. Students cannot be working during scheduled class time. Keep a copy of their class schedule and make sure to cross-check it with their timesheets before submitting them. You should also be keeping track of the hours the student works and the money that they have earned. We provide the student and supervisor with a copy of the payroll calendar. The calendar has two columns, one for you to record hours worked, the other is for you to record money the student has earned. This calendar is also available in an Excel spreadsheet format on our website. Just like you have your allocation for hours, students have an allocated dollar amount. If you run out of hours or the student runs out of funds, the difference must come out of your department budget. If while you are tracking these, you notice that your department allocation is running low, please contact Tim Jacobson, the financial aid director. If you notice that your student is running low on work-study funds, please contact NIDA or Kendra. Students cannot work unsupervised. This is also why it may be helpful to designate a backup supervisor. Please notify financial aid, NIDA or Kendra, as well as payroll when a student is no longer working in your area. Every semester, you must perform an evaluation with each student worker. Please submit these evaluations to the financial aid office. We will provide you with two blank copies of the evaluation when we send your copy of the work-study agreement to you. While we cannot offer raises to students, you can offer some advice for professional development. It is also good to get feedback from the student on their satisfaction with the current position. You may use work-study students during the summer months. You must contact NIDA or Kendra if you plan to keep your work-study through the summer. Department allocations and work-study fund allocations can continue through June 30th. In order to continue working past June 30th, the student must meet these requirements. They must be enrolled for summer term six credits or more or be enrolled for the upcoming fall semester six credits or more. They must also have next year's FAFSA completed and their financial aid file must be ready for an award letter. Once these requirements have been satisfied, the student needs to meet with NIDA or Kendra to do new work-study paperwork as July 1st marks the beginning of a new fiscal year. Keep in mind, payroll takes about one week for processing. It is best to have the student set up their appointment sometime in mid-June so that they can transition smoothly into the next fiscal year. Be sure to complete your timesheets thoroughly. Include a start and end time for each shift and record the total hours for the shift. The number of credits the student is taking must also be reported and both the student and supervisor must sign it before submitting it to payroll. The supervisors listed on the work-study agreement are the only people who can sign off on timesheets. Students cannot work more than 8 hours per day. They must show a 30-minute lunch break for every 8-hour shift they work. Please complete timesheets in black ink only. Do not use pencil or red ink. Do not scribble over or cross out days that are not worked. Try to avoid using whiteout, but if it is necessary, put your initials next to the changes you've made. Be sure to submit the timesheets to payroll on time to ensure that your student workers are paid on time. Eden Prairie supervisors may fax the timesheet into payroll, but still need to submit the original copy. In some cases, you may have disciplinary issues with your work study. Any disciplinary action is to be handled between you and the student. Attendance or tardiness tolerance is at your discretion and can determine dismissal. Any grounds for dismissal are at your discretion. Please allow adequate warning. For example, first give them a verbal warning. If issues persist, give a written warning. At that point, if things haven't been resolved, you could refer them to a counselor or dismiss them from further employment. These are some best practices obtained from some of our well-seasoned supervisors. Set clear rules, guidelines, and expectations right away. Have them written down and keep a copy for yourself and the student. Offer encouragement and tips on improvement. This may be the only work experience they will have before graduating. 
Have a task list of everything they need to be doing. Make sure to train them in on these things on the first day. Talk to them about the seriousness of data privacy if it applies to the position. We give them a confidentiality agreement to sign. A copy of this is given to the student and the supervisor. But you may want to further express its importance. If you ever have questions or disputes regarding a student worker, try to work things through with the student first. If you are unable to resolve the issue, contact NIDA or Kendra. We will get payroll involved if it is necessary. Students should not be contacting payroll directly. Financial aid and payroll do not get involved in disciplinary issues. If you need assistance, try getting a counselor involved, asking HR for advice, or talking to Jean Meyerhofer if necessary. We want your experience with Worksteady to be smooth and beneficial for you and the student. Ask questions and give us feedback. Thank you for participating in Worksteady Supervisor Training.